I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I was asked a few days ago if I could explain what I look for in a saw. Well, I can tell you what I look for. I think a better question is, what should you be looking for? First thing you need to know is, what are you going to be using the saw for? Are you going to be uh, trying to do fine woodworking? Are you going to just be roughing a board off? Are you going to try and collect a saw? Are you looking for a really extreme value on an antique? Well, let's start off with the easiest one. Behind the seat of my truck, I carry a saw. And I carry a saw because I want to be able to cut off boards when I go to the hardware store or when I go to the lumber yard. Quite often in my little Sonoma, I can't fit a full-size board in there. You know, a 20-footer hangs over the top and it's a big pain in the butt. So when I'm buying a board, quite often I just want 11 feet of board. But they come in 10 feet and 16 feet. I don't want 16 feet of board hanging out the back of my truck, so I just cut it off at 11. How do I do that? Well, I take along this saw. This is a Diston D8. It's an eight-point cross-cut saw. Uh, made the, in the late 1800s. Why do I take this one? I really like it. It cuts really well. What would I recommend you buy if you were going to be cutting off the occasional 2x4? Why, I'd go get one of these. This is a Challenger made by the Diston Company. Well, they call the company Diston. It's not the same company that made this one. This is a knockoff. It's okay, it does cut. It has induction hardened teeth. That means the teeth on this saw, you can't sharpen. Once they're sharp, they're sharpened at the factory with a, a grindstone, then they're induction hardened, and they stay sharp a long time. This one's still sharp after I don't know how many years, but it works. And if you lose it, you're out five, 10 bucks. You can buy another one at the flea market. Probably not much more than that. And this one comes with a convenient hanging hole right here on the tip. You can hang this on the pegboard in your workshop and you'll be all set. Next time you need to go in the truck, throw it behind the seat, away you go. It's not a very good saw, but it's an okay saw. And it'll do what you want. The next step down, and some people might say, but it's got a wooden handle, it's a better saw. No, actually this is a worse saw. This is a distance saw also, but this is a really cheap knockoff. Now it has a wooden handle, that's not selling anything. It also has the hanging hole, it's shorter. Now that might have some appeal for some of you because it'll fit behind the seat of your small truck. Okay. But the teeth aren't induction hardened. And the blade is not a very good blade. Stiffs a board. Way too thick. It does cut, but it's just an awkward, stubby little saw with bad teeth, and you're gonna have to sharpen it. If all you want is something that you can throw behind the seat of the truck, Get the induction hardened teeth. Be done with it. Now if you're looking for a really great saw that works well, then set your sights on something like this. This is a Distant number 12. It's going to set you back 120 bucks. It was one of the top of the line Distant saw blades back when Distant made the best saws in the world. My opinion, Everybody has their own. This one is a 10 point per inch saw. And it cuts smooth and clean. Doesn't have very much set on it because it doesn't need it. It's, it's a hollow ground saw. It's thinner at the back than it is at the tooth line. That makes it good and stiff. And it's spring steel. It's not gonna bend on you. Now this one I got lucky as hell. I went to an estate sale. They had this hanging on the wall. I picked it up. 
I'm not even going to tell you what I paid for it. It was a crying shame. This one I bought at an antique shop. I paid the same price for this one that I did for this one. This one is a Distin number 16. It's a similar saw to the Distin 12, but this one is in sad shape. It's not pitted, but it has a fine layer of surface rust on it. This is one that I'm going to restore because it's well worth it. It's a saw that uh, really should be kept. But it's not something that you want to take on if you're just going to buy a saw and use it only once in a while. Once again, you have to sharpen these. And paying somebody to sharpen it is probably going to cost you more than what it costs to buy the saw. Chances are a lot more than what it costs to buy the saw. Now this is one that I restored. That's the D8 that I showed you earlier. Uh, Henry Diston had a, a, a real pride in what he sold. Henry Diston and Sons was in business for a long, long time. Diston saw blades from the 1800s and early 1900s were good saws. This is another Diston saw. This is a rip saw. This one's a cross cut. Eight point per inch cross cut. Five point per inch rip saw. What's the difference between a rip saw and a cross cut saw? And do you need one? Well, are you going to cut boards lengthways? Are you going to uh, take a 2x12 and rip it down into 2x4s? Or do you need to cut a long slot down through something? Then you want a rip saw. Because a rip saw is designed with teeth shaped like chisels. Now, if you're looking for an antique, somebody's going to say, oh, this is a real antique. Look, it's got split nuts. Don't buy this saw. This is a piece of junk. This came in a pile of other saws. I wouldn't have bought it individually, but this one was in with a pile. And this has got everything bad about a saw that you can think of. If you look at the teeth, the teeth aren't in a straight line. Compare the two saw blades for teeth. This one is like a wavy ocean. This is a nice straight line. When you cut with this saw, the teeth are all going to hit at the same time and do a nice smooth cut. When you try and cut with this saw, well, let's give you a demonstration. I'll just clamp this piece of scrap wood in place here, and we'll make a cut with the two different saws. Now, this one has been sharpened a long time ago, and somebody did a really bad job. catches, pops over a tooth and then catches. Doesn't do a very good job at all. Whereas a sharp saw, in good condition with the teeth even, the same amount of effort goes twice as far. Even this 10 tooth blade saw, which is a lot finer teeth. Cuts right on through that piece of wood. So let's say you're at 
an emporium that is selling saws. You look at the saw, if it's got teeth like this one, put it back down, walk away. If the blade has got a bend in it like this one, can you see that it's, it's curved from the tip to here? The front end goes like that. That means that the saw blade is bent. Now you might be able to straighten it out by pulling the saw blade back and that will take out some of the kink, but it's going to come back. You haven't really done anything other than just bend your saw blade. Also this one has got waves in the saw. The teeth right here at the edge are warped, kind of like a serrated steak knife. Somebody cut off the front end. Now, sometimes people did that because they broke it. And they just sharpened off the end so that they didn't get themselves cut on the rough edges. And if it's, what you're looking for is just an old beater saw to, to throw around on things, make your own judgment. I'm telling you, don't buy a saw like this one. Even though they tell you it's an antique made by Daniel Boone. It's not worth it. Now, I have several saw blades that have the bend in it. I use this one as a place to put totes when I'm refinishing them. Makes a nice, easy carrying place. Never going to make this into a saw. It's not worth the trouble. It's got a kink in it. It's got the wavy teeth. It's got pits. The edges of the teeth have been rusted away to the point where if I tried to sharpen it, those pits are going to always run into the teeth and cause me no end of difficulty in trying to sharpen this saw. It's never going to be anything other than a wall hanger because I'm going to use it just to work on handles. And they don't call them handles. This is called a tote. So once you know what you're looking for, good luck buying a saw. And if you want one like this, have at it. If you want one like this, you got to look a little bit. They're out there. I found this one. You'll find another one like it. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.